Hello, hello. How are you? Well, I have done several mov uh, movies, several videos that showed that um, human beings are just so deceivable and that they are just um, close-minded and their eyes are shut very tightly. The last video I made was about 9-11 and yeah, the, the truth is out there, but people still are either very busy and just listen to mainstream media or they are ignorant and don't want to learn the truth. I understand people are very busy. It's hard to survive nowadays and so if you have a family it's yeah it's hard jobs are hard if you want to make money you want to pursue your career when you want to um you know buy the things you want to buy afford the things you want to buy for your family but again we talked about that too these are all worldly things and of course those are distraction that Satan puts in our lives. We are taught from early on that that's the values that are important and that's what we pursue. So yeah, I understand. Then I did a, the Barbie um, video commentary about Barbie and really our sickening situation in this world and hey, People don't see it. People don't see it. They are so blind. Oh, as long as we're entertained again, see, that's what we need. Working hard and tolerating all the crap at work and then we come home and we just want to be entertained. And of course, we have a wonderful uh, uh, institution that institution or um, agency that's providing us entertainment entertainment most of the time or many times tell you the truth but oh it's just entertainment it's just made up but some of this stuff is the truth and people still don't want to see it so, yeah, that just keeps going on, even in our churches and where people should be awake and should be seeing the truth, should be spiritually minded. Most people don't want to see the truth either. Again, church is just nothing but for many, an entertainment. I'll go there to relax on Sundays after a week of hard work. I have to go someplace different just to relax and maybe get some positive um, nourishment or positive things. We don't want anything negative in the church. So then they go home and they continue the same thing. But see, this is how false doctrines enter the church. Because the people are complacent. They leave it to the pastor or the leaders of the church. And they are usually infiltrated by spies. Infiltrated by should I say satanic agents and they are satanic agents because Satan is their true um, leader they may not know it they may have been told oh you're doing this for Jesus 
but in reality the information and the plan and the instructions come directly from Satan. I've done many videos about the aliens, right? How aliens have been around forever. I listened to somebody again. Unfortunately, sometimes I can't recommend these because they're coming from people that are new age and people, many people cannot handle that. They cannot uh, um, take away the truth from maybe somebody's opinion or the truth or the information from somebody's religious uh, affiliation, like if they're a new age. Oh, they're a new age, so throw everything out. Do you know how many doctors are new age and you still go to them and don't ask them if they're new age or not or whatever they believe? They may be atheists, but you still go to them for healing. Um, but, oh no, don't let them know it or else, oh my goodness. I'm not even sure somebody would do that. Oh, he's new age, he's Buddhist, so I'm not going to him anymore for healing. I wouldn't mind if people will do that, but usually people don't do it. But again, this person was talking about that there are absolutely aliens, that they have been around for thousands of years, possibly millions, okay? That's his opinion. Depends what you how how old do you think this earth is? How if there were maybe even uh, um, earth before that? Okay, before our time started six thousand years ago. What what happened before that? What existed before that? Um, we can't be blinded to that or blind to that. But at least for the past 6,000 years, this guy was a non-Christian. And he said that these aliens have been around. He didn't say they were fallen angels. So we have been, even in that regard, we have been fooled for 6,000 years. Oh, first they said, oh, they're gods. And so we had to bow down to those gods, right? And then all of a sudden there was a time of, oh no, they don't exist at all. And so now gradually they're telling us, oh no, maybe they're here, but they're aliens. And he's also saying that these aliens don't want most people to recognize them so they can continue in the dark their devious work. Because these aliens or these fallen angels, they have been uh, uh, controlling our government for thousands of years. At least for the past 2,000 years, they have controlled the government tremendously through this beast system. And I know I have done videos about that. But see... So many things, people, that have we have been lied to. One lie after another. And we're just taking it because, oh, it comes from a pastor. It comes from a teacher that went to college. Oh, it went, you know, it comes from a teacher that, oh, claims to be a prophet, claims to have visions, claims to be a rabbi, and we follow them. Never checking out what is really going on. I was reading again a little book. Um, let me see. I need to check it out. The way, uh, what it's called. It's a free book. You can get it free or you can buy it yourself. It's called The Destruction of Jerusalem An Absolute and Ir Irresistible Proof of the Divine Origin of Christianity, including a narrative of the calamities which befell the Jews so far as they tend to ver verify our Lord's predictions. 
relative to that event, with a brief description of the city and temple. By George Halford. George Halford. Publication date, 1812. That's how old this book is, 1812. Seems like this guy did a lot of research and he used mainly Josephus, okay, to understand the time of the Jews during that time. Josephus wrote a book, The Wars of the Jews, that alone tells you that he wrote about wars. Josephus is a historian, so he writes, uh, he's an eyewitness to the things that happened during his time. Okay, very important to know. So Josephus is a very good source. It's kind of hard to read sometimes, but you should. I think it's book five that is specifically applies to the time um, around Jesus and the time after Jesus. So this guy did extensive studies, not just because, not uh, using Josephus only, but other historical writings as well. This guy had it very well. And then he looked at Matthew, okay, and read Matthew 24, and that way, he didn't have to interpret Matthew 24. Now, this book, of course, has been old. It's not being taught anymore. And this information, who reads Josephus, maybe in seminaries. And so, 2,000 years later, what do we know about the history during Jesus or after Jesus' time, or shortly after Jesus' time, the time of the disciples. And then we allow false teachers in our churches. We are deceived already. We have not opened our eyes because we're still carnally minded. Now I have said that over and over again lately about how important it is to be uh, spiritually minded. If we're not spiritually minded people, we don't see the truth. And if we don't see the truth, we constantly will be misled. And we're seeing that not only in the church, we're seeing that in the world. Okay, in the world. We follow false teachers, we follow false politicians, we think that we can still establish a kingdom here without Jesus. We don't say, thy kingdom can come, thy will be done. Or we read it maybe, or we uh, uh, recite it in the churches, just like, you know, randomly, we don't even think about it. Oh, but we have to stay here, we have to make it work here, we have to establish a kingdom here. Oh, we're the best kingdom or the best country in the world. We have to continue that. But no, is this thy kingdom come means there's no way we can establish a kingdom here on this earth because this earth has fallen. This earth is in the hands of Satan. Basically what it is. And if we're swept away with the world, we don't see what's going on. We will never be ready for Jesus when he comes because we're carnally minded. We don't have the spirit. We don't have the oil in our lamps. Yeah, we do a lot of work. We even, you know, uh, prophesy in Jesus' name. We even cast out demons in Jesus' name. We read the Bible in Jesus' name. We go to church. We do all these things in Jesus' name. But and we even say, Lord, Lord. And it's all nothing but a mantra. Okay, It's not something that we really, really do and believe. 
at least for many of them, for many of the people. And so all we do is follow Paul's teachers. So then when we read Matthew 24, we don't have the truth. We don't have the information that, for instance, this uh, George Halford, you know, was piecing together. And then it's very easy for somebody to come in and give us the wrong interpretation. And we think we need to have an interpretation instead of just reading it and understand it, understanding it because we have the background. It's easy to understand when we have the background and truly read it. I have done videos about Matthew, Luke, okay, 24, I mean Luke 21, Matthew 24, um, and Mark 13. And I always say that Matthew is really the hardest because Matthew is the least chronological, okay? He's the least chronological, alone, just alone in that chapter 24. Luke has it in one chapter, 21. Matthew has, uh, Mark has it in 13. But Matthew is the least chronological and he's the most confusing. So when we see these events that happened, starting with Jesus, all the way to the destruction of the temple, which was 70 AD, we have no idea what happened. Okay? And this book really buy it it's cheap you can get it even from walmart it's affordable it's harder uh, the the print is not so good actually i i got a copy that i think maybe they just made a copy of the original um book from 1812. so i want to look at matthew again because i have done that before and i always say actually start with luke and matthew i'm in in mark because in Luke and Mark, Jesus or the disciples only ask Jesus one question about the temple. For some reason, Matthew added another event in his questioning. Did he re did they really do that, or did Matthew kind of pick that up some other time and then just combined it? But because Mark and Luke didn't do it, I assuming that Matthew maybe was a little confused. Remember, the disciples did not really know everything. They kind of picked up pieces, and we see that, of course, in their, their Gospels, that events may not be as chronological. They may add things together according to the th a theme and so we have to understand that it's not always chronologically written. That's not the way um, the writers told stories in the ancient times. Today we are very chronologically oriented. And so our mind is chronologically oriented. And we think that that's the way we need to do it. But most of these uh, writings like, for instance, Daniel um, and Revelation, for instance, are not chronological. They have various visions, independent visions, that they're just one after another. But these visions could overlap. Okay? So, let's look at Matthew again. I read this little book. Please read it. You want to read Josephus, and I think it's book five, you can do that too. But you have to become familiar with it so you know the truth. Because in our churches, you don't get the truth. And, you know, I have talked about not only dispensationalism that is false, 
and takes advantage of people who are not informed. And so are those vultures that deny the rapture. Those vultures that, that deny the raptures, they still stick with this. They still, I had somebody say, um, well, uh, where is this again? Oh, I need to go back. Sorry, but I didn't have um, the right translation. Oh, I got King James. I could do King James version, I guess. All right, let's do King James. Yeah. Yeah, in 13, in uh, Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I've heard that one, okay, from a rapture denier. And he's, he was trying to say, oh, but don't expect to be raptured before the tribulation. What makes you think you're going to go through or you will be rescued or you will not have to endure the tribulation? Well, people, we're not talking about tribulation. We all go through tribulation right now. What they're actually talking about is the wrath of God. They're putting the wrong, number one, the wrong uh, name to tribulation. And then they're using this verse totally out of context. We will see that this verse is in the context of the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Nothing to do with an end times. End times does not in in Matthew does not start until twenty nine maybe twenty eight verse twenty eight that's where end time starts that's when the day of the Lord starts everything before that is destruction of the temple yeah and of course Matthew can be confusing because Matthew used two um, questions or he describes here in 24, two questions that are 2,000 years apart. And Matthew, I believe, didn't know that. Say that all the time. Luke and Mark only uses one question. And the question was pertaining only to the destruction of the temple. But look at Matthew now. It starts out with Jesus and the disciples standing in front of the temple and the, the, the disciples bragging about how beautiful the temple is. And Jesus said to them, See you not all these things? Fairly I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now they, Jesus tells them, clearly about the destruction of the temple. People, I even had deniers that say, oh no, the temple wasn't totally destroyed in 70 AD. See, there are still stones uh, upon another because we still have the temple mount. People, the temple mount, let's just put it clearly down right now, is Fort Antonia. It's not the temple. The temple was next to Fort Antonia and Israel, Jerusalem, Israel's, Israel, the Jews are digging out there right now and they are hiding the truth from the public where the temple really stood. We know where it stood because they made plenty of excavation. It wasn't under the temple amount, which was Fort Antonia. 
Okay, let's just put it out there. You want to do the research, do it. I have done the research for years and years and years. Okay, so don't question me. You do the research. And then I mean all the research. Don't go just to one side of the people, which I have done for many years. And then I went to the other side and I realized, wait a minute, that's not where this temple stood. Okay. First historical fact we need to realize. Okay. So he's talking right here about the temple being destroyed. Previously in other places, um, Jesus talks about really this, the destruction of the city as well. Okay. That because they rejected him, that is what's going to happen because they rejected him. And because of course he established the new covenant and the temple wasn't needed anymore. But also, I think it's also God is punishing the Jews for rejecting Messiah. People talk about Jacob's trouble and they think it's at the end, but I don't think Jacob's trouble was at the end. Jacob's trouble was actually during this time, the 70 years um, or 35 years actually time between Jesus' death and the destruction of the temple. That's, I believe, was Jacob's trouble. When you read uh, Josephus or this little book, you will see it, see it very clearly. The Jews were in wars, and we will see that in a little bit. Okay, Wars after wars after wars. People were killed, lots of them. And because they kept rebelling, and so it was a very devastating time. And we will see this here. Let's continue to read, though. Verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount Alas, which he did every day, the disciples came unto him privately. Now the disciples, there were four disciples, if you go to Luke, I believe, or Mark, um, they describe who it is. John and his brother and Peter and his brother came to him. Tell us, when shall these things be? We have to read to this account parallel Luke 21 or and Mark 13. So we understand really what's going on. So here, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the signs? That's what Mark and uh, Luke ask. And here he says, And what shall be the signs of thy coming and of the ends of the world? Why Matthew made a connection here, I don't know. But he made a mistake. Okay? He made a mistake. There is no connection between tell us about these things, the destruction of the temple, and the signs of his coming. There is no connection. But the disciples, they thought they were there was a connection, but there wasn't. Okay? You understand? So we have to divide that. And if you read this, yes, it can be extremely confusing. Is there a connection between the destruction of the temple and... Um, the coming, the second coming? No, 2,000 years. That's what the connection is. So when we understand that, we have to understand that what he describes next all the way to the second coming, which is described in verse 29, is a description of the, the signs before the destruction of the temple. Okay? Because that's what they wanted to know. Read again Luke and Mark. And you will see Luke 21, Mark 13. One question. Tell me, when shall these things be and what shall be the signs? Period. 
not of your return. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceives you. Okay? Hello, wake up. This is what Jesus said. For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, is that at the end times? No. It is exactly before the destruction of the temple, right after Jesus died. They had many, many coming, claiming to be Messiah or misleading them. And of course, that continued because there were more Messiah that, that claimed to be Messiah even in the past 2,000 years. And there's more every year. You know, they have somebody during Passover. Oh, there's Messiah. They're not talking about Messiah all year long, but Passover, it must be like a tradition to talk about, oh, we have a Messiah. I think it's just a tradition and they're just played. Oh, here's a Messiah. I think it's part of their tradition, of their Passover tradition. It's all I can say. Fake Messiah. Okay, and then people say, oh, the Antichrist. Like, ridiculous. It's not even anywhere in the Bible. He's telling them, watch for then, before the destruction of the temple. There will be people that are going to do this. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. People, these things have happened. Oh my goodness. Go back. Look at the history. The Jews, they warred, and that's why Josephus is calling it the, the, the wars of the Jews, the books, it's actually a volume. Because they warred against Rome, uh, I think, seven years. I think they started in 63 or something. And they won war after another. And they were defeated and defeated and defeated. And they finally, until it ended, I mean, the Romans just finally had enough of their rebellion, okay, and finished them up. Matter of fact, the war, okay, was so bad in them starting it that Jerusalem was destroyed even before the big army came with Vespasian and Titus. Okay, they were already devastated. Jerusalem was already devastated and there were pestilence. People were, uh, there were dead people, unburied dead people. Uh, in the city. Uh, that, of course, then caused uh, pestilence as well. But the famines also caused the pestilence, okay, because there were famines all over. Earthquakes, people, there were earthquakes all over where the Jews settled. Like, for instance, in Turkey, many of the uh, the uh, cities that in Turkey that Paul mentioned were uh, destroyed. I was in one of them, Laodicea. I drove by when I went to Herak. I think it's called Heraklion. Was destroyed. Colos, Colos, Colossian, Colossia. I think that's how you pronounce it. All these cities in Turkey, Ephesus, they were all destroyed by earthquakes. There were earthquakes in Rome during that time. There were earthquakes all over. Okay? So, yes, this is not about today. It is not about a tribulation time. Okay? All these are the beginnings of sorrows. These are not the sorrows of a tribulation time at the end. Then shall they deliver you up to 
to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. People, that happened. The disciples, do you understand? Just read Acts and you will see how they were delivered up and killed. Okay? To the synagogues, to the officials. Just, come on! Paul himself, Saul, caused it. They killed James real early on. They imprisoned Peter and John. Um, and they, they, oh, horrifically tortured the Christians, the early Christians. It's all done. Jesus said, hey, these things are going to happen. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. People, that has happened. Of course, it has happened for the two, past 2,000 years, but it happened specifically before the destruction of the temple. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Again, saved from what? From the calamity that is going to come that he is describing, the destruction of the temple. Do you understand? That's what you're going to be saved from, from the calamity. And what happened? Well, the total destruction. People were killed. Okay, there was a bloodbath, like unbelievable. The people that were still alive, and those were only the people that could be taken as slaves were taken away as slaves. And that's what happened in Jerusalem. And then it says, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for, wit for a witness into all nations. Then shall, be, shall the end come. Again, end. What end? Even if you think, what, the end um, of what, the wrath of God, that's not the end of uh, tribulation uh, for all saints. Okay, what end is he talking about here specifically? It's, 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 it's simple. He talks about the end of the destruction of the temple. Okay? I mean, come on, this is what he's talking about. Yes, Matthew here makes a mistake that he adds these two events together that are 2,000 years apart. But when we go to Luke and Mark, we see exactly what he's talking about. Here, he is talking about the destruction of the temple alone. Okay? And the destruction of Jerusalem. And then shall many... Be offended, and I said that one, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Happened. Because iniquity shall abound, the love will be wax cold. We read that one. But he that shall endure into the end, the same shall be saved. That's what people always say, and they take it out of context. This has to do with the destruction of the temple. Of course, it's always like that. Anybody who endures to the end, what end? The end when I'm killed? The end when um, uh, when I die? What's, what end? Okay? How do I know what end they're talking about here? Context. Okay? Don't just pull this out and say, oh, yeah. Because of this, you know, you have to endure to the end. No, people don't endure to the end. What's the end? When Jesus appears in the clouds, is that the end? It's not the end because it's just the beginning of the millennium. Come on. You have to define here end. The end here is the end of the destruction of the temple. Okay? And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Okay? Oh, this is another word people say, oh, no, it wasn't at that time uh, preached to the end of the world. Yes, it was. The known world. Okay? The known world. These people didn't know about Americas, but the known world. 
Okay, they went as far as India with the gospel, Egypt, Africa. We know that. Okay, Europe, Britain. That's that was the known world, the Roman Empire world, and they preached the gospel all the way to the end of that empire. Again, let's define em end um, in, um, ends of the world, right? Then in fifteen. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Okay, what did Daniel talk about when he talked about the abomination of desolation? He talked about, of course, the destruction of the temple. If you read Josephus, who actually started destroying, put it on fire, the temple. Because the fire, the temple was put on fire by the Jews themselves. Okay? And actually, uh, Titus wanted to put it out. But they had so many looters in the temple mount. Okay, looters, looters probably their own people choose looting the temple and putting it on fire. So yeah, you should be reading that account just before the temple was destroyed. Yes, the Romans came in later on when they conquered again Jerusalem after uh the, the Jews destroyed it and they just totally totaled it and they totally, um, yeah, took it down to the ground. Yes, they did because they were sick and tired of the Jews rebelling. Okay. And here it says, Daniel's saying, or Jesus is saying, when you see these things, flee to the mountains. Why? Because see, what happens is they should have gone to the mountains earlier and actually um, in this little book we read that they did go to the mountains sooner. They didn't wait until there was destruction at the temple. Because see, after the destruction or after this fire in the temple, that's when then the Romans came in and killed everybody. And we know from historic accounts that none of the Christians were killed. They all listened to Jesus, these warnings, and went out of the city prior. Okay? And it says, let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. People, this is not anybody here today. Oh, flee to the mountains when these and these things are happening. No, this is not for today. Okay? It's not telling us to flee to the mountains. We're supposed to be watching and waiting for our Messiah to come. That's what we're supposed to be doing. If you are left over during the wrath of God, after the rapture, if you're left over, people, I don't know where you're going to go. There is no go. You can't escape. This is during Jesus' or during the disciples' time. Okay? So it says then, don't if you're on the housetop, don't come down. If you're in the fields, don't return and get your clothes. And woe into them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Can you imagine having to flee with a baby? But pray ye that it the flight is not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Sabbath day. Would it would we care today if the flight would be on a Sabbath day when we don't even care about the Sabbath day. This is about the Jews. Then it continues, 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. Okay? Nor ever shall be. This is not said about the time of the wrath. This is said about the time before the destruction of the temple 
And that's why I think it's Jacob's trouble. Okay? This time was Jacob's trouble. I think Luke may even mention it or Mark. Why? Because the time was so horrible. So horrible. That it may never come again. And this is a quote from Daniel. Okay? And I... Uh, and except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. This is not talking about a seven-year tribulation. This is talking about the time before the destruction of the temple. Okay? Because the time was so horrific. Now, there's also signs during um, this time. There were all, also a lot of signs okay, in the sky. Uh, you should really read Josephus, or this little book is so cool. He has done a good job collecting the information. Okay. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, there's Christ, or there believe it not, uh, because false Christ shall arise, false prophets shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive even the elect. See, they, they were leading these people into the wilderness, and they were saying, oh, we are the leaders. We are going to uh, uh, protect you. We are going to rescue you from the Romans. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Do not go forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Don't believe it. Okay? For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even into the west, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. You will see him. But this is, he's just telling them, that you will see clear signs that the, that the Messiah is coming. And you will not see those signs during that those days. Wheresoever the carcasses, there will be the eagles gathered together. The eagles. Okay? So, in other words, I don't know how to understand this, who the eagles are, eagle has to do with the Romans, right? It doesn't say vultures. Where the carcass is, there's the eagles. Eagles could be the Romans. So where the carcass is, the Romans are. And there's there was a lot of carcass in Jerusalem during that time. Now it says here in 29, immediately after the tribulation, of those days. Now, is that correct? Immediately after? No, it's not immediately after. Okay? But Matthew thought so. Okay? Matthew did think that when the destruction of the temple happens, Jesus will return. They didn't know it. Okay? They didn't know it, people. That's why he said that immediately after the tribulation of those days. The tribulation of those days lasted for 2,000 years. Okay? Then the sun shall go dark and the moon shall give her light. Give not her light. Why? This is now introduction to the day of the Lord. That's why Matthew added that day of the Lord or the second coming of Jesus in the question because he thought they belonged together. And you just have to know about history. I understand 2,000 years later, we don't even know our own history. We don't know uh, um, history of, what do you call it? History of um, Europe. But I really recommend to all of you to study history, people. History is important. People, I have to come to an end. 
yeah my videos are already almost 50 minutes but this is going to be a, this was a long video but i hope you can hang in there to the or you did hang in there to the end i did a lot of uh introduction that had nothing to do with the topic so anyways that was important too but you need to understand that you need to read the Bible and understand things, the truth. It doesn't do me any good to explain these things when you do not have the Holy Spirit. Because you will throw all this stuff out anyways. And you will not understand it because your eyes are not open. Because your eyes are closed. The only way your eyes can be open by transformation of the renewing by the renewing of your mind through the Holy Spirit. By yielding to the Holy Spirit, by following Jesus, by following his plan and not yours, by um, getting out of this world, okay? By not following the things of this world. It's the only way. Anyways, I'm coming to an end. Let the Holy Spirit guide you always.